Today, we're gonna to be trying to install some GM LS coils onto our Ford 5 liter 302 engine. I'm gonna show you how, stay tuned. All right guys, so Project Hellstang here and we are gonna be putting these LS7 coils uh, we're going to be trying to put them onto our little motor here. And so these are actually from an LS7 Corvette, like uh, the 505 horsepower, 7 liter, 427. And so I actually picked these things up locally for 60 bucks and they're brand new. That's right, 60 bucks came with all eight coils, the brackets and the factory uh, wire harness, all that stuff for 60 bucks. Uh, local guy here in Michigan just... I uh, had them for his project, ended up not using them. And uh, so his loss, my gain, I guess, right? 60 bucks, you can't freaking beat it. So we're gonna be going uh, to these LS coils along with the uh, Holly dual sync distributor that we, we've already got that, we just gotta pop it in. But let me get you in close. Let me show you what I'm thinking here with these coils to mount them. So if we have a look, they fit you know, pretty good. They almost just wanna rest kind of right on where there must be a ridge back here. So they sit there pretty good. Now, if you look at the bracket, you know, this bracket is really big, it's really ugly. So we are gonna chop this thing up. So what I'm thinking is with our AN fitting here, we need to clearance, you can kind of see that little circle. That will allow this whole bracket to move left, probably half, three quarters of an inch. And then we can chop this back off since there's nothing to mount it to, it's just going to air. And then this will move uh, this last one a little bit closer. So we'll probably keep this bolt. We'll keep this bolt. We'll keep this bolt. So that's kind of what I'm thinking is maybe just three bolts holding this thing on. Or I might even be able to uh, put a little bolt hole right here maybe. And then that way we kind of got, you know, that zigzag pattern holding this thing on. I think um, for this, I'm just going to chop that part right off. Uh, did I make some lines? Yeah, it looks like I even made lines here. So maybe even chop that stuff off chop that off too. Anyway, get it all chopped up, get it minimalized, and then we'll uh, be able to paint the bracket, make it look all pretty. Um, once we get all that stuff chopped up and we can get some holes and stuff drilled, the next issue we have is you can see where uh, these bolt holes don't go, you know, they're, they're not touching the valve cover, right? And I don't know that we really want it um, sitting directly on top of the coils. It's probably fine, um, but I'd like to have a little bit of an air gap in between there. So the way that I wanted to do it, now you could pull these off, get your holes ready, take some uh, aluminum pieces and uh, just weld you know, some aluminum bosses on there and then slide your bolts through or whatever, or studs, something like that. But I didn't want to have to weld. So kind of my solution to it was this. Now I ended up picking up a few different size stainless steel bolts. Everything I'm using is going to be stainless steel and uh, that way we don't have to worry about any corrosion. So I've got some different size bolts. And basically what I'm going to do is drill some holes in the valve cover. We're going to have the bolt come up from the inside facing upwards. We'll put some Loctite, some red Loctite, so hopefully this stuff never ever comes out. And then I was able to find some threaded uh, standoffs. And so the cool part with this is once the bolt's come up through the valve cover, we can put this threaded standoff. And then what will happen whoop, is our dudes will sit you know, on top of this thing and then the stud, the top of the bolt basically will be sticking through there. And then we'll be able to put on our stainless steel uh, nuts that are right here. So that'll all be sweet. And then the cool part with using some factory uh, GM, you know, LS coils is then we can just use some standard LS uh, wires. Uh, so this is just like a set of, you know, LS1, 5357 type wires. And they do have these kind of little heat shields. So that should be cool. Um, and then that way, if we're ever broke down on the side of the road, we can go to any auto parts store, pick up a new wire, you know, it'll easy peasy. Same thing with coils, just get a new coil and we're back off running. So since this car is going to be used for the hot rod power tour and all that kind of stuff, I want, you know, serviceability to be very simple. Now, some of you guys might be saying, well, why don't you just, you know, instead of mounting them on the valve covers, why don't you put them on the firewall or just mount them somewhere else remotely? But, you know, honestly, I'm not a big fan of that. And then you also still have to deal with really long plug wires, you know, going from the firewall to the coils. Uh, it kind of defeats the whole point of having a coil near plug system, right? Coil near plug. So I actually think it looks cool. I like it being on the valve cover. It's going to be easy to service, all that stuff. And the way we're going to do it, where we're almost making like fake studs, right? Because the bolt will be just secured in there. All we got to do to take these apart is blast off a few little nuts and then boom, the whole, uh, the whole thing will come off. So it should be very easy. 
if it works out like I think it's going to work out. And then we're going to go ahead and get these valve covers all painted up. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and get these things blasted all apart. All right, boom, we got these things all blasted apart. So now that we've got them all apart, these just come apart super easy, 10 millimeter bolts on the coils, and then just a couple zip ties I had to cut on this one. And then this one just had this kind of plastic connector that literally just clicks into place, super simple. Um, so anyway, now, like I was showing you guys earlier, we've already got these bad boys kind of marked out where we need to cut them. So now we're just simply gonna go ahead and take our, uh, probably our angle grinder. And I'm just gonna, you know, just, you know, chop it, chop it, chop it. And uh, yeah, then we'll start mocking it up onto the uh, valve cover and figure out where we're gonna make our, drill our holes, get those drilled, all that good stuff. So, so one last look of the beautiful all original until we chop the hell out of this thing. Now after a little bit of grinding and cutting and slashing and all that fun stuff, here's what we got. So whoop, you can see the uh, um, kind of notch we had to make here for this uh, AM line, this breather. So we've kind of got this thing now. It's going to be, you know, kind of something like that. And I'm thinking when I drill these holes, uh, I'm going to want the holes to be, you know, in between the notches. And once we get the uh, holes drilled, if I need to um, probably make some space in between these raised parts, I'm going to kind of grind that out. That way our, uh, our little aluminum or stainless steel standoff can sit, you know, uh, flush against the bottom part of this. And that's what I'm thinking. And then we're going to go ahead and paint this whole thing. Um, otherwise, the only thing I still want to grind is this portion here. I just want to make it a little bit shorter, make it kind of flat from here. And uh, then I think... Uh, we should be good. I think then I'm just going to put it back together real quick when we make our holes, just kind of make sure I'm happy with how everything looks. We'll get our holes drilled, start getting our bolts in, all that stuff, and then get it all fitted up, see how it goes. So I popped the valve cover off, brought it over to the workbench just so we can look at this a little bit better. Um, also took my dash 10 line, got that on here. So I wanted to make sure that when we're getting this fitted, we've got enough room around here to be able to get our AN wrenches on, take this thing apart without issues. And it's close. I'm basically, I think what I'm going to do is line this bolt hole kind of right in the middle of this uh, this thread here. And it looks okay except for this por this top part. So I do need to grind this. I'd like to grind that a little bit you know, straighter. That way it gives me plenty of room. And it looks like this one here, if I kind of line this up um, you know, right in between these two ridges, bolt hole there, uh, move this one up, same thing, it'll be right there. And same thing on that one. And then this gets it, you know, perfectly level across all that good stuff. That's what I'm going to go with. Um, but before I grind this again, I'm just going to pop these uh, back off, grind this, and then we're going to kind of mock it back up and go ahead and drill our three holes and start getting that together, get it all put back together and, you know, get it all mocked up, make sure it's all good. And then we can strip it all back apart for paint. Got it all cleansed out and uh, I already tried, well, I tried taking my blue marker at first and wasn't really reaching down far enough in between the grooves, but uh, it's going to be kind of something just like that. Uh, I did take my punch and I did punch some marks. You probably, uh, you can kind of see it. So one, two, three, somewhere. So I'm going to go ahead and take my drill now and we're going to drill this thing out. And uh, I think, let's see, what am I using? I think I ended up using M6 uh, hardware, and that was just to match um, just to match the holes that are on this bracket. Um, so I've got a couple different sizes. I think we're going to end up using probably like a, a 25 or 30 millimeter uh, long bolt. But once we get the hole drilled, then we can kind of find out and see, and then we can thread on our aluminum do or our uh, stainless steel um, standoffs, get everything bolted up, and hopefully we drill it right. Don't screw it up too much, but we'll see.
All right, so we got it drilled out, and uh, I got so far these um, little standoffs kind of on there. So if you look at the back side, right, all looks good. Nothing's interfering, nothing's in the way. Looks great. And uh, now we just got to see if these will work. And that's what I thought. Okay, so these two look good. Now this one is where we'll have a little bit of an issue because this uh, this part of the valve cover, you can see how the valve cover sort of like goes up and then around, right? So this one's on the back side, so it's sort of facing that way instead of facing towards me. So uh, we might have to grind a little bit on this front side of the ridge. Now, originally what I was thinking was we would kind of um, grind the ridges down around so that this standoff would just sit on the bottom portion of the flat part. But I was trying to figure out how to grind it and not like totally screw up the valve covers, you know, I mean, they're just some used valve covers, but they still look pretty good. So, you know, once I clean them up, I just wanted to keep them nice. I didn't want to screw it up. So I was trying to figure out a way to kind of grind it. So anyway, I still might think about it for a minute. Otherwise, what I think we'll do is we could probably just loosen it. That way we can have some movement. And then that'll probably work. And then we could tighten it. Tighten it once we got it on there. Okay. Yeah, so this works like that. I can see where... We just need to grind that front part of that ridge that's sticking up, and then that'll allow this stud to come forward. Because once we tighten all this down, it's going to be, it's going to get kind of crazy. But um, yeah, it looks good. I think we've got enough room here on this guy to spin freely. Yep, looks like it. So that's good. So yeah, that'll be cool. And then this should give us uh, plenty of clearance as well, especially since I actually ordered these. So these um, standoffs are 19 millimeters or 20 millimeters. So just about three quarters of an inch. And uh, right now I ended up using, these are 40 millimeter long uh, bolts. So originally I was thinking I would use like probably a 35 millimeter bolt um, just because these would be down farther. And so I wouldn't need this longer one, but I'm glad I got the kit that I got because that's the longest uh, bolt that I got. But I got all these stainless bolts and stuff off Amazon. I think like that whole kit was like 13 bucks for like 50 stainless steel bolts. These things were like 10 or 15 bucks and these are stainless steel. And then the nuts were really cheap, like five bucks for 35 stainless steel lock washer nuts. So pretty, pretty cheap to get your hardware uh, from there versus like going to Ace Hardware like we always do and spent millions of dollars. So, um, all right, so I'm gonna make these little modifications and then uh, we'll mock it up one last time and then get this thing ready for some paint. All right, so I think we're good to go. So I've got the, uh, I've got these little standoff things kind of fully tightened down. The nuts are just kind of hand tight, but look, you can see that, you know, these nuts are, they have a ways to go before they're tight and this is still stuck on. So the bracket's stuck on due to the differences, right, of these, uh, the, the plane that these are on. So they're kind of pointing in different directions now that I tightened it down. Um, but I think that's fine. Uh, I might mess with, uh, this one looks flat, seated flat. And then this one that I modified looks okay. This one looks like I just need to modify a bit on whichever side it is, but get that one a little bit better. And then I'm going to be happy with it. And I'm going to go ahead and repeat this exact same process for the other side. I won't show it on camera. All right, you can see here where I had to kind of make these little notches, right? To uh, just to be able to try to angle the studs a little bit better. And it's not perfect. I didn't even mess with this one, but just these two. And it still doesn't come off. You know, once they're fully tightened, it's still kind of stuck on there. But uh, I think that's fine because I can just take off the coils as I need to. So it's going to be, it's going to be all right. Now, one thing I, that I wasn't really thinking of is this bolt. So the valve cover bolt, um, to get that nut on, I'm going to have a stud. But uh, there is kind of just enough room without the coil here to, to be able to do that. So um, that's kind of cool. At least I can just, you know, two bolts, pop this coil off, boom. That way I don't have to take the whole thing off. If I ever need to pull my valve cover off, this bracket can kind of just always stay with it. So that's cool. So uh, once I pull this bracket off, I'm just going to notch that out a little bit just to make sure we got room. All right, so I got a little scared. So just before I go take these things and break them all the way down for paint, I was like, you know what? Let's put it on here. Let's just double check. So I told you guys I have these wires. Uh, so I started to put the wires on. These look like they're going to fit probably, but, man, they are they are uh, going to be really tight. So uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and throw in the spark plugs, and I've had the spark plugs for a while. So I ended up – I always go with NGK. 
I used to work for NGK for eight years or something. So shout out to NGK, best spark plugs there are. And I ended up going with this build, uh, some Iridium plugs. So these are a super fine wire, uh, really badass spark plug. And uh, these come factory gapped right out of the box at 32,000, so 0.8 millimeters. And uh, these are gonna be good to go for our boosted application. These are about two steps colder than stock. So I think TR5, you know, five heat range is uh, stock. These are seven, so a couple ranges colder, just to be on the safe side. And um, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and pop these in real quick. And uh, these are a gasket seat spark plug because we have uh, uh, these aftermarket aluminum heads. I think the TR5s or whatever that come stock, you know, those are a tapered seat. So these have a little crush washer and we're just gonna pop the plugs in, half turn, past hand tight, and we should be good to go. All right, so I've got plugs in, I've got wires connected. I'm pretty sure they're fully seated. It's kind of hard to tell. You know, this metal um, jacket does kind of contact the head, but I'm pretty sure they're all the way in there and they fit. Now, the only thing I don't know is uh, I don't have my exhaust manifolds right now. Uh, they're out getting powder coated or sandblasted, I guess. Um, and then I'm going to ceramic coat them myself. But uh, I think we're going to be okay. Um, yeah, I'm guessing... You know, this is all designed for these kind of plugs and whatever. So hopefully, hopefully it all works. But uh, yeah, this looks all cool. Um, I've got a bolt in here. So a bolt in here. I'm actually going to use uh, valve cover uh, studs, but those won't be here, I think, till the weekend. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied. So I'm going to go ahead and go do the other side, get this all pulled apart, and then we'll do some paint. So the next video update we'll do, we'll have uh, our valve covers all back uh, from being painted and we'll get them all installed, all that stuff. But until then, like, share, subscribe. We'll catch you guys on the next one.